I'm not gonna come through that. Okay, hey, here's what we have. Um, today, we're gonna start, we're gonna continue this first section of chapter one that we did the other day. Uh, we're gonna add a couple new things in today. We're gonna do a couple things that are off topic a little bit to get you kind of mentally prepared for what you're gonna see. Um, Tuesday, remember I reminded you um, yesterday that Tuesday we're gonna have a bunch of teachers in here. Um, it's a part of the model teaching thing, so don't be thrown off when you walk in here on Tuesday that there's five teachers in here sitting. They're not watching you, they're here to watch the activity we're doing that day and kind of see how it goes. Uh, so let me explain the activity we're gonna do, and then, uh, then we'll get to the notes here. So on Monday, when we take notes, we're gonna do normal notes on Monday, we'll get you kind of prepared, we'll, we'll basically time up the bolts that we did here today and some, some extra problems. On Monday, we're gonna do an exit ticket. So this will be something we're gonna do on Monday. Uh, exit ticket will have like, uh, I think it will have right. six problems on it, I think, six or seven problems on the on the actual ticket. Six to seven problems. Now, here's what, here's what we're gonna do. On that exit ticket, um, on Monday, when, you, or when we leave here Monday, you're gonna hand this in before you leave. If you're not here Monday, let's say for some reason you're absent, um, you'll be automatically placed in a group for or Tuesday. So uh, the exit ticket will help me figure out kind of um, what problems uh, you're, you're going to be working on for the most part. Uh, so I kind of want to see that you can get a range of everything. So your uh, goal is to do the best here. That way you don't have to do as much work. Um, now, here's the idea. On Tuesday, when you walk in, the desks are going to look like this. They're going to be in rows, and then there's going to be one block over there. So you're going to have like three major columns of rows here which will be like, the, I think the desk will be kind of facing each other. There'll be another row, another row, and some over here. And the idea is that um, the group will be, the class will be split into different groups. There'll be probably nobody over here, uh, but you'll be split in different groups. And the goal is, uh, I'm gonna have a bunch of problems on these desks that are in front of you, depending on what group you're broken up into. And your goal is to do a certain number of them. Kind of like when we were doing the red tag idea, very similar. Uh, so. Uh, you'll do a couple of problems, you'll move to the next group. If you're in another group, you'll move somewhere else. Uh, so you, that's kind of your goal, is to kind of work through the problems. Ignore the teachers in the room. They just want to see how the activity is going. Now, at the end of class, the end of class, we're going to take another exit ticket to see how well you picked up on the stuff. Because there's going to be some stuff you haven't seen yet. So that's the goal. Does that make sense what we're doing on Tuesday? Yes, the teachers are not here to watch you. They're here to watch the activity. They want to see the, how this works and how the like this, how how you actually perform on that. Uh, so just do your best. That's all I ask. So that's just going to give you a heads up for Tuesday. Um, Monday we'll just do an exit ticket, and that'll help us break out into groups so I know where to put you, so you have a seat in chart basically when you walk in. Um, so yeah, so just be kind of ready to go. Um, now today is kind of is a day where we're going to try to review what we did yesterday, but also. It's also to help us figure out some of the stuff that maybe you don't don't know yet. So section one here, we're doing variables and expressions. So here's the first uh, here's the first slide that I gave you yesterday on expressions. This is the one I think we were ending like on this slide. I think I did one more slide after this on on um, yesterday Thursday. Uh, this is the one where you're looking at keywords. I didn't have every keyword here. I only put a select few. So I had some of, more than, increased by, there was total, added to, like we had a bunch. Um, I'm gonna try to resend this out over the weekend because um, I wanna I wanna try to clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna try to put it in columns, kind of like what you see here. Um, next one, uh, subtraction. I have a, a bunch there, but on the, the document that I handed to you last week, uh, I had a ton, I had a lot of them. There was more than the four that I provided here. Uh, subtracted from and uh, the, and subtracted by, I think those are the, like, the special types, I'll have to look, oh, subtract from and less than. Those are the two special cases, we're going to talk about those today, and multiplying and division. Now, here's our goal today. Obviously, I have two sets of problems I want to walk through. So if you have your notes out, we're going to go through a bunch of different examples of this, because I want to see on your notes that you can actually do some of these problems I'm going to walk around the room. So make sure you have them out right now. So here's the first style. Okay, we did one of these yesterday. When you read the actual expression, remember expression, shh, expressions do not have equal signs. It's just, you're writing down the base math form, you're not solving it, you're not doing anything like that. I just wanna see if you can interpret what the words are saying and what the problem is. Now, if you have your notes out, 
you ready to go? Because I'm going to walk around the room and kind of see how you do. So this is one that we did yesterday. Just give you kind of familiar with this. So this is a number n is more than 6. That's how you write it. Right? Pretty basic. That's what I want to see today when you're doing your problem. Okay? We're going to do a couple of these. Uh, so I'm going to do maybe two or three of these. We're going to check them. And then we're going to get to like more difficult ones. So you can um, so you get a taste. So my goal is kind of like we're going to do half the day we're going to do some of these. Half the day we're going to do the other type and we'll be done early and we won't have homework today. Okay? That's kind of the, that's kind of the goal today. We'll kind of see where we're at and we'll see how well you're paying attention. So, okay, are we ready to go here? Okay. Well, let's jump into the second one here. Okay, the second one. Letter B here. The difference between a number and 25. So let's see what you have here. Write down what you think that means. You're not solving. I want to see kind of where you're sitting. If you have it, raise your hand. I'll kind of walk around the room as you're kind of writing. Again, this is just a trial, bless you. I just want to see where we're sitting at the keywords here and how much practice we need at this. So the difference between a number and 25. Once you have it written down, I'm going to see what we have. Okay. I don't want your blood on my paper. It's okay. Yes, you do. Paper, paper's in the back if you need it. Pencil's in the front if you need it. That's my stuff. Okay, I'm going to check. I still got a couple more people I'm going to check. So, uh, let's see. Oh, before I forget, uh, Abraham, did you leave a notebook in here the other day? The blue notebook? Abraham, you got a notebook? Oh, yes. That was a good one when you walked out. It should just slap it. Oh. Okay. Okay, so I've got to check a couple of people, so I'm going to still walk around the room just to kind of see where you're at. There's still a few that I need to see. Definitely uh, some over there. Uh, hey, when you grab that box, just bring it over here and we'll put it back here. I think I had an extra, didn't I? I'll have to get some new ones before we get it. So, better if you have one more. Three. It looks better. Okay, alright. Hey, so I've only seen a few uh, few mistakes on this. Um, difference of, if we go back to the previous slide, the difference of the keywords there, this is subtraction. Difference is subtraction. Quotient is division. That's probably the most common mistake that I saw. So we're finding the difference between a number and 25. That's what I'm expecting to see. That's it. No equal signs. There should be no equal signs on these problems. We're not solving equations. We're doing expressions. Okay, so again, more than is adding to, difference is subtraction. Now let's do another one. Okay, let's see where we're at. These are supposed to be the easier ones, right? Just getting used to the words. All right, so two-thirds of the volume V. Two-thirds, now we're going to get used to fractions. Let me write a fraction down, what two-thirds means. Of the volume V. Let's see if we can write that down. Again, these are keywords. We haven't done a lot of these. I want to see kind of what you know right now. This is kind of like your pre-assessment. What do you know? What have you learned before? Probably done this at some point in either junior high or middle school at some point. So let's see how I can key, key these together. If you don't remember, that's why we're doing this. See if we can refresh your memory a little bit. I don't know. I want to, 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 I want to,
Yeah. And we ran so many plays. You only ran it once? Yep. That's dark. All right. Okay, so I ran here we go. Okay, two thirds of the volume V. Oh the word of means to multiply. Uh, a lot of people have the dot, some people have a little X, but you're going two thirds of the volume V, two thirds of the fraction. Volume V. No equal signs. So if you use an equal sign, remember we're doing expressions, there should be no equal sign here. Now, some people do write it like this. They'll put a little time symbol in the between. Be careful that kind of looks like an X now. We have to be careful on the variable. I prefer the dot, or you could have wrote it with parentheses. Put parentheses around items. That means to multiply as well. All right, so do we understand the easy ones? Yes, sure. The, the basics, right? Now, here's the idea. What I want to get to at some point is can we do multi-step problems? Now, let's ignore the next one. I want to get to a multi-step problem. Two multi steps. All right, here we go. So, multi steps problems are when you have more than one thing actually happening at any one time. Now, this one's kind of tricky. The reason why they have the word less than, that means to subtract. It also is a special case. If, if you look back at the document I sent out uh, about a month ago, when you have the word less than, these items switch. So, the 10 is actually going to go in the back. And then this product of 7 and F will go on the front. Now, product means to multiply. It literally uh, is the keyword for the actual answer after you multiply. Right? So product of 7 and F, so 7F. That's how you multiply them together. You can put a little dot between them. I don't really mind. That's the key thing. Now, the word less than special, it switched things around. Also, the word subtracted from is the other one that you could, you could flip. So if I had, instead of less than I had subtracted from, it'd be the exact same answer. Those, that's, these are the only keywords that actually switch things around. Everything else, you just read it how it's, how it's stated. Okay, do we understand what a multi-step problem is? We have like more than one thing going on. Okay, so again, it's getting used to keywords. So let's do a couple more of these. Let's do two or three, and then we're gonna move on to the next type of problem, where we get to order of operations stuff. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one here. All right, product of eight and a number, and you're gonna increase by 12. You're gonna increase it by 12. So let's see if you can write that down. Again, we're gonna do about two or three of these, and then we're gonna move on to a completely different problem where we're gonna take out calculators and do some calculations. You can pick any letter you want. You can pick A through Z. Preferably leave out T's, I's, S's, O's, because those kind of look like numbers and whatnot, and plus signs. So eight times a number, I just use N. And then we're going to increase it by 12. Increase by means to add. Now, if you did not have a variable, like an X, you're defeating the purpose of what we're doing here. Anytime they say a number, 
they don't say what specific number, you have to use a variable, something that represents an unknown. Okay, questions on that one? Okay, we only have two more, then we're moving on to completely different types of problems. Two more here. Okay. So, next one here. We're gonna write it down. And he's out, right? Yeah. Dog, wake up. You need to stay awake. You need to go to sleep, go sleep in the office. Alright, so your last one. Difference between one fourth of a number and ten. So write that down. Difference between one fourth of a number and ten. Don't touch me there. So difference of one fourth of a number and ten. Just kill me now. Just glaring of that. All right, last thing today. Um, here's what we're doing. We're going to do order of operations and stuff. So I want to see how you do. You have a calculator in front of you. I want to see what we get for an answer on the following problem. All right, so let me get rid of this. All right, so order of operations. Here's the problem I'd like you to write down. Two plus five times four. That's all I want you to do. Write that down. Put it on your paper somewhere. We're going to go through about two or three of these, and I'm going to range in difficulty. I'm going to start easy and kind of go up to more difficult to see kind of if you know the basics. After these four problems, we're done for the day. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, write so right down. Give me the answer. I want to see it. Try to write down the entire problem because we're going to work on how do you show work on some of these problems. Because, again, when we do order of operations problems, I do require that at some point you are showing work. I know that a calculator can literally do most of the work for you. I do want to see how you're attempting it in the order that you're going in. Okay, now, if you don't remember the order of operations. It's multiplication versus So if you don't know the order of operations, here they are. It's parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. Now, they go in groups. Obviously, parentheses and grouping symbols first. Exponents, that's the thing we talked about yesterday. Multiply and divide, whatever one comes first, left to right. And then add and subtract, whatever one comes first, left to right. And that's the order I go in. So it's PEMDOS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, that's how I remember. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. All right, now, when we go through the math, on this problem, what do I have to do first? Five times four. Five times four, which is? Four. 20. 20. And then the last step is you add 2, you should get 22. The most common mistake people make, if you go out of order, you'll go 2 plus 5, get 7, and then you take it times 4 and you get 28. There's a very clear difference. This is why we have an order of operations, is so that everyone in the room will get the same answer on whatever problem you're working on every single time. So you have to multiply first. Now, here's the thing. I'd like you to take, if you have one of my calculators, type it in exactly how you see it. 2 plus 5 times 4, and then 40. hit enter. It's 40. 22. 22. It's smart. It the calculators can figure it out. As long as it's a simple based problem, like this. This is simple. Right? The problem is, can I borrow that calculator? Okay. This is considered a non-menu driven calculator. What I mean by non-menu driven, when you type stuff in, it doesn't show up all across the screen at the same time like yours does, or mine. Right? Um, this one, you have to do it piece by piece, because if, if you were to type in 2 plus 5 times 4, hit enter, there's potential that these calculators, potentially, I have to go those, right? But potentially, these calculators will get it wrong. It'll say 28 instead, because it's doing it as you type it, which is kind of unique. Okay? It's the same with that little blue one that I had the other day. So you do need to know the order. All right, next one. Here we go. Three plus two to the third power divided by two. Okay, now we're getting up to more difficult types of problems. Um, again, I want you to see it do it part by part, piece by piece when you write it down. I'm going to walk around the room on this one to see kind of what you have written. I want to see the final answer here if you can. Seven. Seven. Yeah, go make sure I see work. I want to see work on this one. This is one that I want to see that you're actually attempting it. What are you getting? 
Do you know how to type stuff in the calculator right. correctly? I don't want to just see the final answer. I want to see what you're typing, how you're writing it down. That type of thing. I got it done. Make sure you show the work on the paper. Let's see if you can show work now. I know the calculator will give you an answer, but do you know how it's doing it? Yeah. What if we didn't even use the calculator? If you didn't, fine. Just, you got it wrong. But that hey, seven. You just buy that. You 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 why are they sending us this game? Oh, Why would you want to fight? Give it a few minutes here, and some people are still writing. What? How about you this way? You better. Good about it, you or your dad? Place of Pokemon. You're such your dad's son. What? Shh. Let's hit things. I don't know that. Well, how does that? All right. Now, I know some of you are still working and still writing. Here's the idea. I know the final answer. My calculators will just spit it out. It'll say it's seven. But let's talk about why does it just spit out seven. Let's talk about the actual math that's involved here. You have to do the exponents first, which is multiplication. Because if you look at the order, there's no pressing on this problem, so we do have to follow exponents. An exponent, two to the third power, is two times two times two. Now, to type that in a calculator, easy. This is how you do it. Two, you hit the little carrot key, you type in the three, and hit enter. Now, on a non-menu-driven calculator, instead of the little carrot key, you're looking for a key on your calculator that might be like x to the y key. That's the same thing as a carrot key. So two to the third power key. Um, when you type that, this will spit out an eight. That's what it should spit out, not six. It's two times two times two, which is actually eight. Then you're gonna divide by two, because the next order you have to do is divide first. So eight divided by two ends up being a four, and then you can add the three last. That's why it's spitting out seven, okay? That's the, that's the idea of like what your is actually doing. It's pre-programmed to do all this stuff for you. All right, last round of the day, I'm only gonna do three. Here's your last one. Shut up. I'm telling your mom. Here we go. Oh, Four plus five times two minus one. Easy. I'm done. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's parentheses. Mm -hmm. I did not see that. Mm -hmm. Nine. Nice. 